works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? That means the Galatians had received the Holy Spirit. This is when their spiritual life began. Diyan po nagumpisa ang kanilang buhay sa spiritual. Not only had they received the Holy Spirit, mga kapatid, but also the miracles worked among them, which is the evidence that this was so. So, tumanggap kayo ng Holy Spirit, tumanggap ng miracles ng Panginoon, bilang ebidensya na ginawa ng Lord ang miracle na ito. Take note, not by the works of the law, but by the hearing of faith. Sa pamamagitan ng pakikinig ng may pananampalataya. But you know what? We may observe in this book that, that even the, those people who were baptized with the Holy Spirit could be deceived by wrong or false teaching. Pwede pa rin ma-deceive, especially by teaching that salvation or ang kaligtasan daw po is a reward for obeying the law of Moses. Yan daw po ay reward sa pagsunod po sa batas ni Moses, especially po pagdating po sa Ten Commandments or for doing good works sa pamamagitan ng paggawa ng babuti. So alam niyo po, maraming tao ang ganyan po, lalo na po sa mga non-believers, even believers. Dahil po, just imagine, kahit believer na, yung pati po ang nasa isip. Na gumawa ka lang na mabuti, ligtas ka na, okay na daw, gawa ka lang na mabuti, okay na daw yan. No! That is not true, my friend. That is not true, brothers and sisters. Hindi po totoo yan. In fact, in Isaiah 64 verse 6, But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Ulitin ko, are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So basahin naman po natin sa Tagalog. Lahat tayo ay naging marumi sa harapan ng Diyos. Ang mabubuting gawa natin, maruruming basahan ang katulad. Uulitin ko, ang mabubuting gawa natin, maruruming basahan ang katulad. Nalanta na tayong lahat gaya ng mga dahon. Tinatangay tayo ng malakas na hangin ng ating kasamaan. Just imagine, yung gawang mabuti, basahan lang sa harapan ng Diyos. Take note, mga kapatid, ha? gawang mabuti yan. Pero basahan lang sa harapan ng Diyos. Why? Alam niyo po, wala pong masamang gumawa ng mabuti. Dapat, dapat lang po na gumawa tayo ng mabuti, lalo na po sa ating mga kapwa-tao, sa ating mga kapwa-Kristyano. Dapat lang po, para pakita natin na totoong Kristyano tayo. Pero, tadaan ka muna sa proseso ng kaligtasan. At yun ay walang iba kundi yung gospel ng ating Diyos na buhay. At pagkatapos mo maligtas, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, ang sabi po rito, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if, if we do not lose heart. Pagulugin po natin, Kaya't huwag tayong mapagod sa paggawa ng mabuti sapagkat pagdating ng takdang panahon, tayo ay aani kung hindi tayo susuko. Ibig sabihin, kaya magiging katanggap-tanggap na po yung gawa nating mabuti. Magiging acceptable na po sa Panginoon yan. Bakit? Kasi po ligtas na po tayo, sinaib na po tayo ng ating Panginoon. Kaya katanggap-tanggap na po. Now, second reason na ang salvation ay hindi po sa pamamagitan ng mabuting gawa. Mark 10 verses 25 to 27. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Sino daw maliligtas? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men... It is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. So these verses do not only refer to the rich man. Hindi po yan limited dun sa mayayaman lang o sa mayaman na tao lang. Kundi para po sa lahat ng tao po yan. So with men, whoever you are, Whatever you are, it is impossible for you to be saved. Imposible para sa'yo na maligtas. 
Pero pagdating po sa ating Diyos na buhay, but with God, yes, maliligtas ka sa pamamagitan na madalas ko pong banggitin na sabihin po sa inyo, that is true the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. Uulitin ko ang sabi ni Pablo, by which also you are saved. Ibig sabihin, nakakaligtas if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, ang application po ng gospel ng ating Panginoon nasa Acts 2.38 naman. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, This gospel of salvation, mga kapatid, was revealed by the Holy Spirit to St. Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Mga kapatid, do not ever be deceived kapag may nagturo ng ibang way ng salvation or gospel na hindi po tinuro sa inyo ng church na ito. Another gospel po yan. Iwasan nyo po. Iwasan nyo po. Ibang gospel yan. Another gospel yan. Tandaan po ninyo, sa spirit po ng Lord, galing ang gospel natin. At ang mabigat po dyan, those who embrace the false gospel, yung niyakap yung false gospel, which is by works of the law and not by faith, are under curse, nasa ilalim daw ng sumpa. Iwasan po ninyo. Because nasa ilalim ng sumpa yung taong yan. Why? Galatians 3.10 For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Meaning, kapag hindi ka sumunod sa lahat ng utos ng law, ng kautusan, nasa sumpa ka. Tanong ngayon, mga kapatid, kaya ba nating sundin ang lahat ng utos ni Moses? Isa pong malaking, malaking, malaking no. Ang sagot, hindi po natin kaya at hindi po natin kakayanin. Why? Dahil aabot po sa approximately 613, take note, 613, lahat ng utos niya. Papaano masusunod yun? Or how can you say that you can obey and follow all the, the laws of, or commandments of Moses? Eh, 613 lahat yan. Ang dami, saksakan ang dami. At kapag hindi mo sinunod lahat yan, take note, lahat dapat, susumpain ka. That is why Our salvation ay hindi na po base sa pagsunod sa batas ni Moses. Dahil alam po ng Diyos na hindi natin kayang sundin. Mahihirapan tayong sundin eh. Kaya dinaan na lang po ng Panginoon sa pananampalataya para makaya po natin sa biyaya niya through His grace. At ganun kabait, ganun kabuti ang ating Panginoon sa tao. Now, In Galatians 3 verse 12, Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. So it was clearly said that the law is not of faith and the man who does them shall live by them. Yun daw sumunod sa batas, sa kautosan, ay dapat mamuhay sa batas. What do you mean by live by them? Yung pong mamuhay sa batas. For your information, definitely it is not about living in eternal life. Because in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5, ang sabi po rito, You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them, I am the Lord. Meaning, yung pong salitang live in this verse was not about eternal life. But 
It is about long life in the promised land. So, ibig sabihin, kapag sinunod ninyo ang batas ko or ang batas ng Diyos, ay mabubuhay kayo ng matagal na panahon or mahabang panahon. Hahaba ang buhay mo pero hindi po ito related sa eternal life. Gayunpaman, related naman ito po sa sinabi ni Pablo in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Take note. Honor your father and mother, which is one of the Ten Commandments, and you will live long. Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, kapag sinunod mo ang batas ni Moses, ay hahaba ang buhay mo, pero walang pangakong eternal life. Take note, hahaba lang ang buhay, pero hindi eternal life ang tinutukoy. However, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. The Greek word exegorasen was translated po as redeem po sa English. It was often used to speak of buying a slave or debtor's freedom. Yan po. And Christ's death is a death of substitution for sin. Purchase believers from slavery to sin. Tutubusin po tayo or tinubos po tayo sa pamamagitan na, na pagiging alipin ng kasalanan. And from sentence of eternal death. That is why in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 19, ang sabi po rito, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, hindi daw tayo tinubos sa mga bagay na nabubulok or nasisira, like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, kung hindi sa pamamagitan ng dugo ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And also in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Una, para raw dumating sa atin ang blessing ni Abraham. I believe this is the blessing of salvation of the souls. Kaya nga sinabi po na Lord kay Abraham na sing dami po ng bituin sa langit yung magiging anak po niya, and it was referring to us, mga Gentiles. And second, it is about the promise of the Spirit from the Father, which is the Holy Spirit in the book of Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Take note, sa day po ng Pentecost dumating yung pangako ng Holy Spirit na the book of Acts chapter 2 na siya pong pinakamahalagang regalo na bigay ng Diyos po sa atin. Now, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 29, But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. So in this verse po, you will see the radical contrast between the law of Moses and the new covenant, yung pong pagkakaiba po ng batas ni Moses at yung pong bagong tipan. It also indicates the one born according to the flesh, yung pong pinanganak sa laman or ayon sa laman, which was Ishmael, na anak po yan ni Hagar, na katulong po ni Abraham. And the one born according to the Spirit naman, or yung pinanganak po ayon sa Spirito, is none other than Isaac, the son of Sarah, who is the legal wife of Abraham. Now, the difference between the two covenants. So yung unang covenant po, It is the, the law was a, a fleshly covenant. While yung pangalawa naman po, the new covenant, which is the covenant of the Spirit. Now, another difference naman po nila is those who are under the law are entangled with the yoke of bondage of the law of Moses. But on the other hand, yung isa naman, those who embraced faith found liberty. In Galatians 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Uulitin ko. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now, does it mean that you will not obey the Ten Commandments anymore and some of the good laws of Moses? No, hindi po yun. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. Ibig sabihin, naparito si Kristo para po tuparin po yung batas ni Moses. Ano ibig sabihin? Galatians 3.24 Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So Paul said that the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. Yun daw batas ay ang ating tagapagturo para dalhin po tayo kay Kristo. Pero pagdating po sa verse 25 of Galatians chapter 3, ang sabi po rito, But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Nung dumating daw ang pananampalatay sa atin, hindi na daw tayo nasa ilalim ng tutor or nung law. Naulilinawin ko po, ang ibig sabihin pa nito, ha, hindi na tayo magpapatutor, hindi na tayo magpapaturo, or hindi na tayo mag-aaral ng Biblia. Tignan po natin. Now, question. Kung hindi na tayo under sa law or tutor, saan tayo under ngayon? In verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, nor you are all one in Christ Jesus. Uulitin ko, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Ibig sabihin, we are now under the Lord Jesus Christ. However, as far as tutor, or teaching is concerned in the book of John chapter 14 verse 26 but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that i said to you the lord jesus christ clearly said that the holy spirit will teach us so ang tutor natin ay ang Holy Spirit na hindi na po yung law ni Moses. Ang tanong, paano tayo tuturuan ngayon ng Holy Spirit? In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 29, it says, Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So malinaw po dito, itong spirit ng ating Panginoon ay inutusan po si Philip na, na pusmus din ng Holy Spirit na sundan po, yung, yung sundan po at sumakay po doon sa karwahe po ng yunok. Ito po yung yunok na pinasusundan po kay Pilipe. Pagdating sa verse 30, So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? So nagtanong si Philip doon sa yunok, kung naiintindihan niya ba yung binabasa niya? Pagdating sa verse 31, it reads, And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? Ulitin ko, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. So malinaw po na sinabi po ng yunok na hindi niyo naiintindihan unless may mag-guide sa kanya, may magpaliwanag sa kanya, or may magturo ng kasulatan sa kanya. At nung tinuruan po siya ni Pilipe, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Tsaka lang po niya naintindihan yung kanyang binabasa. In other words, kailangan po nating lahat ng magpaturo at mag-aral po sa mga taong puspus po ng Holy Spirit para hindi po tayo maligaw ng pangunawa sa kasulatan. In fact, even si Nicodemus, expert po, mahusay po pagdating po sa scriptures. Tinuruan pa rin ni Jesus Christ para lang po maintindihan niya po ang kasulatan. So, ibig sabihin po kahit mismong yung tagapagturo ay may nagturo or may nagtuturo din na puspos ng Holy Spirit para hindi po maligaw ang kanyang mga tinuturuan. Now, going back to our main topic, Paano natin masusunod ang batas ni Moses na ang magtuturo po sa atin ay hindi na po yung law, kundi po yung Holy Spirit na? Galatians 5, 16 to 18. I say then, walk in the Spirit. Take note, walk in the Spirit. 
Bakit po? And you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another. So magkalaban po ang flesh at ang spirit. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Para hindi mo na daw magawa yung mga bagay na gusto mo. But if you are led by the spirit, ikaw ay nilid ng spirit, you are not under the law. So malinaw po na sinabi po na pag ikaw daw ay pinangunahan, nilid ka ng spirit, ay hindi ka na daw nasa ilalim ng batas. Bakit? In verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Ano-ano yan? Which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissension, yung ikaw yung nagiging dahilan para magtalo-talo yung mga tao, heresies, ibang katuruan kaysa sa official na teaching, ano pa, envy nandyan, murders, drunkenness, revelries, yung mga wild noisy celebrations, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So yan po yung mga gawa ng laman na ipinagbawal po ng kautusan po ni Moses. However, in verses 22 to 23, But the fruit of the Spirit, ulitin ko, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Ag- ulitin ko, against such, there is no law. Meaning to say, against the fruit of the Holy Spirit, there is no law. Ibig sabihin, you do not need the Ten Commandments and all the commandments of Moses because once you have the Holy Spirit, you will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, lalakad ka na ayon sa spirito at hindi na ayon sa laman. And the Holy Spirit will produce the nine fruits such as love, yung joy, yung peace na, yung long-suffering, kindness, yung goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And once you have the nine fruit of the Spirit, you will not surely violate all the laws of Moses. And that is one of the greatest roles of the Holy Spirit, is to fulfill the law by having the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. And this is the Holy Spirit in action in the book of Galatians. So sa oras pong ito, yuko po natin ang ating mga ulo, tayo po'y magpasalamat sa ating Panginoon. Panginoong Isus, muli kami po'y nagpapasalamat po sa iyo sa mga salita mo. Higit sa lahat, salamat Panginoon na ipinakita mo po sa amin na kami po'y hindi na po nasa ilalim ng law o ng kautusan kami po'y tinubos mo na sa kautusan o sa law of Moses, kami po'y nasa ilalim mo na. Salamat sa Holy Spirit mo na patuloy na nagtuturo po sa amin, nag po sa amin, pinakikita po sa amin kung gaano po ka-importante na mapasa amin po, lalo na po yung fruit of the Holy Spirit. Tulungan mo po kami, Panginoon, sa aming araw-araw na buhay na kami po ay makalakad, ayon, sa Espiritu mo, hindi po ayon sa laman. Ikano pong bahala sa lahat ng mga tagapakinig. Hayaan mo, Panginoon, ang lahat ng aming mga napakinggan ay may apply po namin sa aming mga pangaraw-araw na buhay. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. And to all our first-time viewers po, if you want to be redeemed from the curse of the law, The major key is to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, ano po ba yung gospel ng ating Panginoon? Kanina, binanggit ko po sa inyo ito in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Ang sabi po rito, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, and in which you stand. 
by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to to the scriptures. Now, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about the death of Christ, the burial of Jesus Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we need to believe. Kailangan maniwala po tayo sa gospel ng ating Panginoon. Kaya po, right after we believe, hindi po dyan natatapos. We also need to apply it to ourselves sa paano pong paraan by obeying the gospel. At kailangan po natin sundin yung gospel ng ating Panginoon. Sa paano paraan in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, first is repentance. Repentance symbolizes the death of Christ. Tayo naman po'y magsisisi ng ating mga kasalanan. Yan naman po'y para bagang pinapatay natin ang ating kasalanan. Kasabay naman po ng kamatayan ng ating Panginoon. At naniniwala po ako na kahit ikaw na yung pinakamasamang tao sa balat ng lupa, the Lord is willing and able to forgive your sin as long as nandoon yung buong puso mo na nagsisisi ka, umihingi ka ng tawad sa Diyos at naniniwala po ako na ikaw ay patatawarin ng ating Panginoon. Yan po ang unang step, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It symbolizes the burial of Jesus Christ. Tayo naman po ay babautismuhan naman po sa tubig. So para bagang nililibing naman po natin ating mga kasalanan kasabay naman po ng paglilibing kay Kristo. So tayo naman po, babaptize po tayo sa water in the name of Jesus Christ. So hindi po yung paghuhugas po ng katawan, kundi yan po yung nakakapag-alis po ng ating kasalanan. And that is the second step. We need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And thirdly, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit which symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ or yung pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoon after three days. In fact, once you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you are also receiving power. Power and power to overcome all the works of the flesh. Lahat po tayo may, may kahinaan. Marami po sa atin, gusto mo magbago, pero hindi ka makapagbago, nahihirapan ka, hindi mo kaya. You know what? Once you have the Holy Spirit in you, yan po ang tutulong para ikaw ay makapagbago. At yan din po ang magagayad po sa atin kung ano po yung kalooban ng ating Panginoon para masunod po natin yung kalooban ng ating Diyos na buhay. So yan po yung kailangan mangyari po sa atin buhay. Unang-una, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And thirdly, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we call the good news and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that, sa lahat po ng gustong tumanggap sa ating Lord, pwede po ba na taas po ninyo yung dalawang kamay bilang tanda ng pagsuko. Yuko po ninyo yung mga ulo, pikit po ninyo yung mga mata and please repeat after me with this prayer. Panginoong Jesus, Lumalapit po ako sa iyo bilang isang makasalanan. Patawarin mo po ako sa lahat ng aking mga pagkakamali at pagkukulang. Sa oras na ito, tinatanggap po kita bilang sariling tagapagligtas at tinatanggap po kita bilang Diyos ng aking buhay. Naniniwala po ako na ikaw ay namatay, ikaw ay nilibing, at sa ikatlong araw ay nabuhay na magmuli. Tulungan mo po ako makapagsimula ng bagong buhay at idagdag mo po ako sa iyong kaharian. Maraming salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Sa lahat po ng interested po magpababtize, andyan po mga telephone numbers po natin sa baba po ng mga screens po ninyo. Pwede po kayong tumawag dyan para magpa-schedule po tayo ng water baptism. Ganyan din po yung instructions kung paano po tayo pupunta sa lugar. So once again, on behalf of our beloved Bishop, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. God bless every one of you and to God be all the glory.